<laughs> like, Mark, if you like things to make sense, uh, segue, then you should not watch the movie Ambu Alliance because I mean, naming conventions alone is not doing it for me. Like, look, Michael Bay has. I, I don't want to say guilty pleasure. I don't necessarily believe in guilty pleasures, but I think about as fucking close as I could get to having a guilty pleasure is Michael Bay movies. There's something about his style that's just so overblown, not like in your face, a hundred mile an hour. Everything is always going on all of the time. There's no chance for you to interpret anything in any of his movies because he hits you over the fucking head with a hammer to explain exactly what's going on whether it's like the score being overly loud and leading the emotional direction his characters that just seem to be always either angry or deeply in love with each other like there's no there's no bit in a michael bay movie where where people are kind of just chilling and just enjoying themselves really maybe some of like bad boys too uh, potentially, but other than that, everything else is always high stakes all the time, um, which is, yeah, pretty intense. But anyway, I digress. Ambu Alliance. Let me set up the plot for you, right? So, uh, Yahya Abdul Mateen, who is a very good actor, I think, and is, you know, going to be, if he, if not, is not considered already a big star um, for his kind of performances in Trial of Chicago 7 and, and his Black Manta and Aquaman, um, then he will be, I think, very, very soon. But he plays a guy and at the start of the movie is, is trying to see if his medical insurance, so he's an ex-soldier. Um, he, you're told this by the very unsubtle pans around the room to pictures of him dressed up like a soldier and then pans to medication on the table and it's clear that he's trying to use his, his medical insurance to cover an operation for his wife, which he can't cover. Um, so he decides to go and go and see his adopted brother um, who is played by Jake Gyllenhaal, Danny, who is an absolute piece of work, evil character, who's like in some sort of weird car showroom thing. And you're thinking like, oh, okay, right, is this guy a bit of a high roller? Is he a bit of a baller? But no, and he, t- he, he turns up as his Danny, the character played by Jake Gyllenhaal, is leaving to go on a serious bank robbery. And instead of Yaya Abdul-Mateen going, nah, I don't want to do that, he just goes, yeah, okay, then, well, I need the money, so... And he just happens to, like... I wondered if he'd, like, stopped on the way to get a coffee, um, whether or not... <laughs> whether or not he would have ended up going on this robbery or not. He'd have got there, and they would have already left, because the second he got there, all of the characters are saying to Jake Gyllenhaal's character, hey, Danny, it's time to leave to go do the robbery that we have been planning. And they plan the worst robbery ever they turned up they didn't take out any of the cameras they didn't have masks they let everybody see their face they even said each other's names they went into the bank like full guns blazing and everything and it was just like this is awful and and will um yaya abdul mateen's character he was such an integral part of the robbery section that i'm like well what the fuck would they have done without this guy this would have gone even worse and of course it goes terrible because they 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 plan it so badly and then that's the first maybe 20 minutes and then an hour and a half of the movie is essentially speed in an ambulance uh, <laughs> so in the ambulance is it, all of the crew gets killed except danny and will jay jim horn yeah i've done um so those two are in the ambulance along with um yeah, Isa Isa Gonzalez. Um, I don't know if you guys know Isa Gonzalez. I would consider myself an Isa Giza. Um, she's very very good. Please um, don't say she- that again. <laughs> Shut up, man. You know, if you can have the Bay Hive for Beyonce fans, you can have the Isa Gizas for Isa Gonzalez. Yeah, you know, it's all about branding, son. Uh, don't at me. And anyway, so she's in the ambulance and she's trying to save the life of a cop. Um, who's in there i can't remember the name of the cop anyway not important but basically he's been shot twice while they were trying to escape and uh they figure out that these these four are in the ambulance so of course the fact that there's a cop in the back of the ambulance stops the lapd from just pressing a button and exploding everyone in the ambulance because you know that isa gonzalez's uh medic character would have just been killed by the lapd because 
they, they just wouldn't have this. So what you have is this very protracted chase scene throughout the whole movie. Uh, at one stage, she's doing like open surgery on this guy while there's surgeons who are on the f- like <laughs> basically on FaceTime explaining to her how to remove her spleen, um, <laughs> and she's doing it live. Uh, and even though the spleen it seems like it ruptures, yet he's still okay. Like she still manages to sew him back up, and he seems all right later in the movie. I don't, I don't know. But it's just so, everything about it is just so fucking ridiculous. And Jake Gyllenhaal is just mad all of the time. Like, he just doesn't ever stop shouting every single line of his dialogue. He's just constantly yelling at the top of his voice. Uh, whereas Will, his brother, is just a, a lot more kind of, he's meant to be like the good guy who's got swept up in all of this. But he's a big dumb idiot. Like, why would you just decide to just go on a bank robbery when you've been in someone's company for two minutes? I have no idea whatsoever. Um, but yeah, none of that stuff, I guess, matters. There's some really cool scenes, you know, of, of Chase and, you know, there's explosions because Michael Bay, there's people getting horrifically maimed, which seems to, the more movies he does, the more you see people getting maimed. Like you see a little girl who's punctured by like a fence spike within the first two minutes of this movie. Oh, which good I stuff. Just, yeah, I just didn't need to see, but I, I, I got a graphic example. Because, you know, when they show those things at the start of a movie where it'll give you, like, this movie is a 15 or an 18, and then it'll be like, contains mild references to this, that, or the other. <laughs> One of the things that it said on the on the thing at the start of the movie was medical gore. <laughs> Which is the first time I've ever seen medical gore listed, um, and that the thing's banned in a movie. I just, I, I was, I was absolutely pissing myself when I saw that. I was like, okay, that's, that's the direction we're gonna go in. And yeah, I, you see someone's like entire torso get like run over and their legs all bent and broken and all over the place. And yeah, like spleens are exploding and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's Michael Bay as fuck, man. <laughs> this movie. Uh, I, I don't know why, but for some reason, they're just there's just shots in the movie that are like nauseating. Like there's a scene where where Will and and Danny are having a big argument, and the camera is just you know sometimes when there'll be like a slow pan around two people talking, just to kind of set the scene of the like they're in the middle of the shot. And the camera keeps going around them just to kind of, rather than doing the standard two shot, just to add a bit of art, arty direction to it. Uh, so Michael Bay does this, but he does it at like 30 miles an hour. So this camera is just going around the pair of these two really, really quickly. And you can't actually focus on any of their features or any of the acting performances as they're shouting at each other, which is like the theme of the movie is just people fucking so angry about everything or, or deeply, deeply in love with their wife or their children or something. Um, fuck's sake. Everything about this movie is so dumb. Um, it is the maximum level of Michael Bay. If you know and enjoy Michael Bay movies, you will go into this and you'll go, yeah, okay. Cause it is spectacle at, at its, <laughs> its finest. Um, but it makes not a single lick of fucking sense at any stage. Um, so yeah, don't expect plot. Don't expect dialogue to be good. Just expect explosions and medical gore. Um, and that is Ambu LA in a nutshell. So guys, what do you reckon? You're going to go and see it. Is the LA and ambulance stand for Louisiana? Unfortunately, no. It stands for Los Angeles. Damn. Um, and it's not the one in South Patagonia, Frank Black. It is very much the one in California. Uh, oh, God. So the first shot of the movie is... Uh, <laughs> it says Los Angeles, like, you know, when it's set in the scene and it comes up, like, you know, and just in case you hadn't figured out, the Os and Ngles disappears, and it says then just the L and the A <laughs> opposite sides of the screen. But then to really rub it home, they moved Central into the middle of the screen, and then it's just like L A, <laughs> and then the title comes up, and I was like, oh my god, I'm 30 seconds in, and I'm I'm bawling of laughter at medical gore and the stupid thing of of Ambu L A and coming on the screen, and yeah, just. Oh. Like the only way he could have hit it home harder is if he had like California Love or something playing in the background during that. Ah, uh, wait, does California? I'm trying to think. Is California Dreaming played at one stage? There is a California song. Of course, played there at... is. 
at one stage in this movie. Because you know Michael Bay when he does uh, when he does needle drops. I mean, he doesn't he doesn't do subtle needle drops. Hey, like he? him and Zack Snyder are two sides of the same coin, right? Yeah, I Zack Snyder. I think he just. Do you know, I, I watched a Zack Snyder movie and I think he was just, you know, whatever was on shuffle on his iPod that day or, or his fucking, sorry, Spotify, let me make that more 21st century for everybody. Um, yeah, whatever was on shuffle on his, uh, his, uh, his Spotify that day is what he puts in his movies, which is always like really super mainstream stuff, right? Oh, um, I, I could see Michael Bay being a title fan. Oh, I, I, I don't know, man. I, uh, <laughs> I could see him being an audiophile. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know if Michael Bay, I don't know if Michael Bay does anything subtly. Like, I don't think he would choose the more subtle, uh, option for, for his streaming service. I think he would choose like whatever the most obvious thing was available. Uh, but yeah, God damn this movie. I, I won't say I liked it, but I really enjoyed watching it. Does that make sense? That uh, seems kind of apropos from Michael Bay film, being perfectly <laughs> honest. It is the Michael Bayest Michael Bay shit you have ever seen in your life. So if that's what you're into, if you, like me, love no subtlety in any of your movies, and you just like to be beaten over the head and, and shouted at and told whether something is very good or very bad at all times, then yeah, watch it's uh, okay. LA and I, I watch about five minutes of world wrestling entertainment every week and I get plenty of what I need from that. <laughs>